of themselves. They are plays that the, the audience can identify with immediately. It's about their society here and now. I think it's in the revivals that you appreciate that he's not only immediate and contemporary, but the plays prove very durable or easily adapted to other circumstances. In Poland, the Removalists now has had five major productions and the club is still running. They've done three productions of the department. Those plays are about institutional infighting and bureaucracies and obviously something about that appeals to the, <laughs> to the Poles because they do a lot of my work. I did have a play called The Club um, go on on Broadway. It only ran for four weeks, but still I had the experience of a play going on there and the first night experience. The reality is that it isn't so much whether you're innocent or not that counts. It's whether the public think you're innocent. I was terribly nervous. There I was sitting knowing there were 120 critics there. Well, it's all sudden death here. I mean, you walk out of the theatre and, and the reviews start rolling in um, almost from the minute you get to the celebration party. It's a bit harrowing. David Williamson's play is good, not great. Players won't win the pennant, but they played the game well. The name of the game is winning in profits at any ruthless cost. And his comic drama has truth, intelligence, and skillful plotting. With its flaws, Players has much to admire, and it's worth a visit. It starts out promisingly enough, but it turns out to be a promise unfulfilled. I finally got all the crits back and did an analysis. And they really had contradicted themselves thoroughly on just about every major dimension. Um, you know, it went, went the whole spectrum in roughly a normal curve. Was it witty? Was it not? Leaden to hilarious? Uh, was it uh, thematically deep or shallow? Um, trite and trivial to this has touched the deepest human truths. <laughs> I, I was looking for a few more at that end, but, you know, at any rate, it was still the same on the normal curve. So I formulated a law of criticism that says, um, given that the work attains a certain level of complexity uh, and competence, the chances of attaining a critical consensus approach zero as the number of crits approach infinity. And that's... that's <laughs> I came home a little less worried about criticism because after an experience like that you realise it's intensely subjective. I'm, I'm not bedazzled by, by Broadway or anything like that because my um, prime function is to write plays about Australia for Australians. If, if, if they are accepted overseas, that's a bonus. But uh, I certainly don't regard the Australian productions as small beer. They're my, my prime purpose here. For a play to have a sense of truth and accuracy, I think it does have to be rooted in an environment that the writer knows. That doesn't mean it, it's necessarily a parochial play. It just means it's a truthful play. If the issues, the tensions and the observations of the human beings are good enough, well, the play will speak to other cultures and other times. If you become a writer sitting up in your top room and writing about a life you never experienced, you see get fairly arid. Um, I think it's important to become involved in family life, in serving on committees whose aims you believe in, uh, in generally uh, keeping a life going around you and not just sitting contemplating about a life that you used to lead. And concern and rationality can be made so loud and insistent that the world's leaders will be forced to hear. The future of mankind is at stake. Let them all know that we have no intention of letting the cockroach inherit the earth. Thank you. I didn't come to Sydney primarily to advance my writing career, but because I genuinely like the physical feel of the city and I've wanted to start afresh somewhere else. There's a liberating thing in a way of getting out of the city of your birth. It wasn't until John Bell did his very good production of The Removalists up here in Sydney and John Clark did Don's Party that I was noticed as a dramatist. My plays worked for a large audience here first. I've been dying to have a fit of artistic angst and say the muse has hit me, I, I must write. But uh, you don't get a chance when you've got four kids, you've got, to, um, you've got to, and, and a wife that works uh, longer hours than you do, so I, I have to be fairly disciplined and fitted in um, to the space I can find. Okay, thank you. Well, great, you. Yeah. Have a good day. Yeah, we like.
I have to be a nine to five writer because I have to do my share of the shopping, taking kids to school, listening to emotional problems, whatever. Odd little things you read or hear can strike you and stick with you. But I do have a lot of ideas. I do jot them down in books and consult them at a later date to see how they stand up. Some of them just mull around in your mind. I just read a short magazine piece on the growing uh, incidence of perfectionist behaviour in the United States. And I thought, that's interesting, and that sort of stayed around the back of my head, and that eventually became the perfectionist. And certainly uh, you do start with that feeling that there's an issue here. In the same way as the removalist started from a story told to me by a removalist as he was shifting our furniture, he started telling me about an interesting day last Friday when these two beautiful-looking girls came and asked him to shift the furniture and then the husband got stroppy and the police gave him a thump and the issues suddenly alerted me to, to the drama there. I found it immensely powerful, horribly, horribly so actually, so powerful that I could never bear to see it when it came out of the film, nor did I ever want to go to another performance in a conventional theatre. It was terribly powerful in that small space when one was so close to it, one was sort of living it and it was acutely painful. You extend dramatically and form dramatically and exaggerate the situation for dramatic reasons. It does finally become fictional. Grab us a bloody beer from the kitchen. Be odd, but that's your fault for letting them take the fridge. Get a beer, Ross, in the kitchen. Not so loud, you bastard. My head's still ringing. Sorry. The police have a certain role in our society. That role invests them with authority. A bit warm, but not too bad. So if you're writing a play about authority being misused, then characters that suggest themselves are policemen. I wasn't writing as an attack on the police force. I was trying to find a source of good drama. What do you think of Ross's potential? What is? A welterweight. <laughs> <laughs> a bit worried about him, actually. It shouldn't be. Comes from good, solid stock. His father's a coffin maker. <laughs> Knocks up the spit. <laughs> so I started with the characters. I intuitively um, or unconsciously chose certain character types and the play evolved in first draft form dictates of those characters. Um, so I literally didn't know where I was headed next at any point during that first draft. And the first draft structure is not all that far different from the final draft. I think I only did two and a half drafts on removalists. Often at the end of a first draft, I'll write comments and say, look, this can never be performed, it's too chaotic, but there may be a play in there somewhere. There's just, uh, I think, a warning mechanism in your head that says that's too clichéd or that's really spelling it out in too heavy-handed a way. It's just an intuition you have and it's something that's unconscious. And I then tend to work to three, four, five, sometimes six drafts to try and organise and shape a dramatic text is a blueprint for a future performance. At some stage, the creativity of a director and the creativity of actors have got to operate on that text and create something that isn't there on the written page. Subtext, in a sense, can only be realised in performance. He only got 12 kicks last week. I saw the statistics. The looks, the pauses, the anguish on the face of actors conveys meanings over and above that printed line on the page. If you can get a bit further up here, yeah. John, then it's easier for John to go past. Oh, great, all right. Yeah, I'm doing a bit of a wander down that I don't yeah. have to do yet. And yeah. also, it's good for the flying walk. An interesting point about David's plays, which I'd, which I'd like to make, because it's a reflection on me, really, I would...